Do you know what time it is? It's supernatural story time. And if you're easily scared, and even if you're not, there's only one thing left to do. Just turn off the lights, because these are stories that you listen to only, only in the dark. dark. Bizarre Paranormal Encounters There can be no doubt that terrifying things can happen in times of war. However, most cases, it can at least be counted on that the enemy one faces is a living human being. What happens when other more supernatural forces creep into war zones? What are soldiers to do when faced with mysterious phantoms, ghosts, apparitions, and entities against which they have no experience and which they have not been trained to fight? War zones have attracted tales of hauntings and supernatural phenomena since time unremembered, and certainly one of the most modern such places of paranormal terror is the desolate battlefields of the war in Afghanistan. This is a place that is not only plagued by fighting and violence, but also apparently strange forces that have shown some soldiers here that human enemies are not always the only thing to be scared of in these bleak, violent wastelands. Several mysterious reports came from a United States Marine who had just come back home after serving a tour of duty in Afghanistan. The witness tends to be quite secretive about his role in the war, only stating that his unit was relatively safe and only suffered two non-combat related casualties. The witness claims to have had a couple of potential encounters with ghosts during his service, and one of them occurred as he was sitting with some superiors and colleagues within a makeshift office in the desert, which had three rooms. There were reportedly four other people in the cramped room with him when, as he was standing near the back door, he noticed his lieutenant step through the door and into a small adjoining contractor's office. He saw the man clearly, but at this point there was nothing particularly strange about it, and the witness explained he was wearing an FROG suit and everything. Nothing unusual about him, even had the mustache. Just 30 seconds later, a call came through asking for the lieutenant, and the witness went to the contractor's office to fetch him. Strangely, the room was completely empty. Nobody was there. Since there was no other door out of the office, the witness asked if anyone had noticed the lieutenant leave, but nobody had, even though there were four others in the enclosed space, and it seemed that somebody would have noticed such a thing. The witness went to the rear door of the office they were in and looked around, but there was no one there either. Even a look outside showed no signs of anyone. It was as if the lieutenant had just disappeared into thin air. The witness explained the following. I said, disregard, Sergeant. Nobody is around. Looks like I was seeing things. And my roommate, a fellow named Lance, says to me, that's bullshit. You and I both know somebody is in that room. And I just said, nope. You saw it too. Someone walked in and nobody came out. But nobody's there. Another incident in the very same office happened one evening at around 10 p.m. The witness claimed that he was alone after working late and on his way out when the door to the contractor's room opened by itself and stayed open. He went to investigate and shone a flashlight about into the dim space, but no one was there. He said that at the time he had a very strange feeling, like he was being watched, and that it was quite unsettling. The very same witness claimed to have seen other strange things during his tour. He also said that there was a mysterious heat signature that would be seen on infrared equipment wandering and pacing around out in the desert, outside in the dark. Yet when it was observed with different cameras or the naked eye, nothing was there and there was no response when they called out into the night. Another witness who reported strange ghostly figures in the desert claimed that his unit was plagued by a mysterious phantom that would appear around the outskirts of their camp and vanish in the blink of an eye. The first time it appeared was a little after dusk, a couple hundred yards from the position one of the men described as a random PVT told the others that there was a person out there in the wilderness just standing there. The witness looked and at first couldn't see anything, but after a moment could make out a dark blob in the vague shape of a person. 
The sergeant apparently was called over and saw it too. When asked where the figure had come from, the private explained that it just popped up. Whoever was out there was just standing motionless with its back to them. The witness described the eerie scene and what happened next. So we watched this person for about three hours who just stands there motionless with its back to us. You could put optics on it and see it was a person, adult male, average height and build. Best part, we borrowed a thermal monocular and this fucker doesn't register in it. Zero fucking heat signature. Then randomly, just poof, gone. Random PVT spends the next six weeks telling everyone about the ghost we saw. About six months later, the same witness was out on patrol when two of his unit reports seeing two figures standing on top of a berm a couple of hundred yards away, anticipating an enemy IED, or known as an improvised explosive device. They stopped the vehicle and examined the figures, which appeared to be men just standing with their backs to them. They were motionless and would not respond when called to, just like the strange phantom previously seen six months earlier. The lieutenant called it in and some of the men got out to go investigate. The witness would explain what happened next thus. We dismount. The lieutenant calls over. The Terp asks if he knows what's up. Terp gives blank stare and shrugs. LT decides we should go and have a look-see and do some hearts and minds shit. I stay in the truck which feels like 140 fucking degrees. 20 minutes go by. LT comes back with a weird look on his face and says, We're out of here. Later that day, I ask another guy, What the fuck happened? He says, They got within 50 yards of aforementioned persons, and presto, gone. I ask, What do you mean, gone? And he just looks at me with his blank stare and says, Gone. They were there, and then they weren't. Weird, huh? In another account, a Marine who served in Afghanistan and Yemen from 2009 to 2013 relates an odd experience. One evening at 1 a.m., the witness had just finished setting up a patrol base with four members of his squad while the other 17 men slept. In front of the patrol base was a huge open field and to the left was, rather spookily, an Afghan cemetery. As the witness was looking out over the field on watch duty, he claims that a rock came hurtling through the air to land at his feet. Thinking this to be peculiar, he peered out into the darkness over the field, which was wide open with no blind spots or hiding places. But he couldn't see anyone there nor any movement. As he was looking, another rock reportedly was tossed in his direction from the field. The witness was put on night vision equipment but could still see no one there. And infrared turned up no heat signatures either. The night was completely quiet and that field was totally empty. Yet another rock would be lobbed at him as he tried to figure out what was going on and the whole thing was quite unnerving. The Marine would say of the eerie incident. At this point, I'm kind of freaked out. This happened right after my team leader died. So I was freaked out and nothing to rule out what threw rocks at me because no one was there. Equally as bizarre as any of these accounts of strange intruders is that of another soldier who was operating with a special forces squad in the mountains of Afghanistan with the mission of setting up a hide to survey in a village several miles away that was believed to be harboring a Taliban person of interest who the military had been tracking for years. The squad's main goal at the time was to observe the village for a few days for any suspicious activity or persons as well as to collect any useful information that could be later used in a raid. To this end, they set up a team of six men at the base and two others whose job was to creep in closer to observe from a different vantage point. Things went well at first, but on the second day, the squad began having trouble maintaining radio contact with the observation team and the TOC or the Tactical Operations Center. They found that transmissions were plagued by static and sometimes would not go through at all. It was chalked up to the magnetic content of the rocks in the area, and the witness and some of the men went out to reposition the SATCOM in order to get a better signal. As they were doing this at around dusk, 
one of the soldiers said he spotted a man wearing a white robe who looked to be flitting and running through the rocks outside of the village. When this was reported, the men were immediately suspicious, and the witness would say, There was something odd about the way he described it, but we were more worried about being compromised. Needless to say, we folded up our shit and got ready to move out. We weren't going to end up in some lone survivor type clusterfuck. We were the fuck out of there. So at this point, it's late dusk, and we were moving pretty quick. Everyone is on high fucking alert. We're a small element in a remote area without ready access to any kind of quick reaction force, and we had no reliable comms. The team continued their hasty trek back towards their outpost, and the witness took up the rear, walking backwards and making sure they weren't being followed or leaving a clear trail, his gun trained on the darkness the whole time. As he did this, he spotted a fleeting glimpse of something white moving in the distance, although he could not be sure just what it was or if it was following them. Oddly, he would later report that at the time he had begun to sense the smell of freshly baked bread permeating the air and a sudden onset of a feeling of peace and relaxation which he sensed was emanating from the direction they had come from. This sensation was so profound that he actually slowed down and thoughts danced through his head of running over to this comfortable place he felt pulling at him from where they had been. He shook off this daze and reported to the other men what he had seen and that he thought they were possibly being trailed, to which an officer replied what he had seen, which was something white moving as well. The witness would say, I asked my dudes to keep their eyes open for anything because I thought I had seen someone trailing us. Our senior scout piped in. That's strange, Mom. I was Mom, long story. I thought I saw some dude in white on the ridge in front of us. At this point, all the hairs on my neck are standing up. Everything felt strange. The air felt heavy and sort of sweet. The silence hummed loudly. With the night steadily moving in, a sense of urgency, panic, and dread set in, and the men picked up the pace even though they were already exhausted from hauling their heavy packs over the uneasy, rugged terrain. As darkness creeped over the landscape to slowly envelop them in pitch blackness, they put on their nods, or night vision goggles, turning the world into a green haze. The night was incredibly silent, even more than usual and there was no movement out there in the mountainous moonscape bathed in the green cast of the night vision goggles. But this eerie silence would not last, and this is when things allegedly got very strange indeed. The witness describes it best. Hallucinations happen, but what happened was beyond comprehension. First, we heard a sound like a huge airplane taking off, a loud low buzz that slowly increased in pitch. We had to yell over comms to hear each other. Everywhere I looked, I kept seeing what looked like glowing eyes staring back at me. But once I would center my focus on where I saw them, they would disappear. We were fucking panicked. Everyone was holding their rifles at the high ready. We were expecting some kind of ambush attack, and we started talking out the RP we would meet at if we needed to start a peel and move. Then it all just stopped. Everything got dark. The only thing I could hear was my breath and the blood pumping in my head. We stopped, dug into the side of the mountain, and performed SLLS, stop, look, listen, smell, for about 10 minutes. Nothing, not even bugs. The air and the land were silent. Baffled, frightened, and overcome with fatigue, the men quickly resumed their trudge to the wilderness, back to their camp, very aware that something very possibly malignant and beyond their experience was out there in the dark somewhere. As they scrambled over loose rock and through scrub and brush, the witness claims that he suddenly noticed on a parallel hillside the very clear sight of a man dressed in light-colored robes, which seemed to be slowly making his way towards their position. Bizarrely, it seemed that the stranger was just passing through any obstacles he came across as he moved slowly but inexorably closer. The witness would describe the rest of the surreal encounter thus. He seemed to melt over and around the rocks. 
It was fucking unnatural the way he was moving. Through the nods, his eyes glowed. I scoped up on him and saw that he was looking directly at me. It was pitch black. There is no way he could have saw us from that distance without any kind of night optics. Suddenly he stopped. He picked up one of his limbs and he held it in the air, almost like he was waving at me. Then the arm melted back into his form, like it wasn't an arm at all, but some kind of extendable proboscis that was meant to look like an arm from a distance. I was about to ask the guys if they could see him when he suddenly disappeared. The witness also saw lights flickering in the distance near the town, which he presumed to be the enemy closing in on the area where the booming sound had originated. The team moved on and managed to make it back to the recovery location. They went on to recount their strange experiences and were reportedly told that it was probably all attributable to weariness, panic, and adrenaline. The whole thing was more or less forgotten until a few days later when the story would take another weird turn. According to the witness, the reason we did the observation was so we could bring the intel back for a raid that was to be conducted. The raid was successful in the sense that finding a deer hit by a car is a successful deer hunt. Apparently, the team that moved into the village found it completely abandoned. They also found several men in the area where I had seen the lights that night, which were hauling ass out of there. The corpses had been ripped to shreds. And based on the sheer amount of blood, the general consensus was that there were more men that were killed there than just the bodies that were found. It went in the official records as a successful raid with several enemies, KIAs. Unofficially, no one has any idea what killed them. All I know is whatever it was, it chose. It chose those men and not us. Whatever that it was remains unknown. Another story comes from a man by the name of Jerry Aberdeen, who relates a truly bizarre experience that happened to him when he was stationed in Mosul in Inua province in 2004. This is his story. I was attached to the infantry at a forward operating base, Patriot. A call went out on the radio that FOB Diamondback, the airfield, was under attack. Everyone on every FOB from Courage, Blickenstaff, Patriot, and Maris jumped into the closest vehicle and headed to the airfield to counter the attack. I was in a vehicle with some other infantry guys, an engineer and a PSYOPs guy. When we got to the airfield, we saw some dudes trying to climb over the wall. The gunner opened up on them and the rest of us took up a position in a ditch on the other side of the road and opened fire. There were three of us side by side, the engineer, the PSYOPs guy, and myself. We fired and one guy and he dropped from the top of the wall. Hard to tell who actually shot him. Right after he fell, there was a stream of black smoke coming out of him. The engineer made that comment that he must have been wearing a suicide vest and it malfunctioned. A few seconds later, the black smoke grew larger and started to take a human-looking form. What happened next, all three of us saw, and there was no doubt. The now fully materialized black smoke was standing upright and now had red, smoky, glowing eyes and a weird-looking mouth. The damn thing actually smiled at us and turned to sort of run, but it just dissipated after it took a few steps. Very hard to describe how it all happened. All three of us just looked at each other wide-eyed for a second or two. After it was all over, we only spoke about it once, then never again. So far, here we have been looking at assorted, isolated incidents of the strange and supernatural. But the war in Afghanistan also seems to have certain places that draw in such bizarre tales. One such place is a lonely outpost called Observation Point Rock, also known as simply The Rock, which sits exposed around 20 meters or 65 feet above the desert and situated near what appears to be a looming giant rock, but which is actually the ruins of a caved-in ancient mud fort, complete with arrow slits and the crumbled remains of turrets. Captured from the Taliban in 2008, the isolated outpost typically holds a small contingent of U.S. Marines to keep watch and guard it. And in addition to its reputation 
as being a harsh forbidden place full of dust and grit and sporadic rocket attacks by Taliban fighters. It has also gathered about it an even more sinister reputation of being an intensely haunted and cursed one. Almost as soon as the Marines moved in there, there were strange stories and dark rumors swirling about the place. It was said that Taliban fighters had been buried alive in the caves below and that there were numerous bodies of Russian soldiers buried here along the failed Soviet invasion of these lands. One group of Marines digging a trench claimed to have come across a human leg bone, which led to the discovery of another piece of human remains, followed by another and another, including skulls and whole desiccated corpses and skeletons, which were all believed to have possibly been Russian since a stake with Russian writing was found. They would later find out that a contingent of Russian soldiers had been supposedly executed there in the 1980s after being found by the Taliban while using the rock as a hideout. Also among the macabre remains were found shards of ancient pottery long buried within the dry earth with more inscrutable unknown origins. With the creepy ambiance and all of the bodies said to be entombed here, it was perhaps no surprise that weird reports would start popping up amongst those stationed here on these badlands. Noises with no discernible source, objects moving on their own, strange lights, disembodied cries or screams, the sounds of footsteps or crunching gravel, even when there was no one there, the sudden onset of heavy feelings of dread. The men serving here were often plagued with very strange phenomena, Electrical equipment was also said to often malfunction here, and that fresh batteries had a habit of going dead within minutes. On some occasions, machine gun fire or incoming rockets could be heard, but nothing was hit and none of the guns had been fired. There were cases of movement seen on the perimeter only to turn up no trespassers, on thermal equipment, and no footprints. A Sergeant Josh Brown, 22, once said of Observation Point, the local people say this is a cursed place. You will definitely see weird-ass lights up here at night. And another soldier named Lance Corporal Austin Hoyt 20 said, This place really sucks. The Afghans say it's haunted. Stick a shovel in anywhere and you'll find bones and bits of pottery. This place should be in National Geographic. In the front, there are weird-looking windows for shooting arrows. You know they say the Russians up here were executed by the Mujahideen. Strange phenomena were said to have been going on before they had even arrived. The British soldiers who had occupied the base before them also supposedly had experienced such strangeness and even warned the American troops of what to expect when they got there. They claimed that lights prowled the bleak landscape, that phantoms and shadows moved about in the desert, which were only briefly glimpsed by infrared cameras before vanishing, that there were dancing lights that could be observed through night vision goggles, that there were often noises and voices from nowhere, screams or shrieks out in the desert at night, and that to touch any relics or bones found there was to invite great misfortune. Although the tales of the supernatural surrounding the haunted base are numerous, some stand out as particularly creepy. One corporal, Jacob Lima, had a few spooky stories to tell concerning the observation point rock. In one account, he claimed that one night he was startled by a chilling scream coming from one of the men. When Lima ran to investigate, he found that Corporal Zolik cowering in fear at his guard post. Zolik claimed that as he had been sitting there, he had felt breath on his ear and heard a clear voice whisper something in Russian. The man was so terrified that he begged Lima to stay with him until his shift was finished. As they waited there together, Lima said on several occasions they heard footsteps up on the observation post above them, even though no one else was there. At one point during the night, Lima was scanning the area with thermal imaging and allegedly saw what looked like another soldier with bald fists standing out in the desert. As he tried to discern whether it was friend or foe, the mysterious figure vanished into thin air right before his eyes. The whole incident was enough to make Zolik desperately request a transfer out of there. Interestingly, other men also frequently reported hearing disembodied whispers in Russian around the outpost. 
On another occasion, Lima was on watch and suddenly heard a dog that was kept there named Ugly Betty barking wildly at something. Thinking it could be the enemy, Lima put on his night vision goggles and scanned the night for movement, which turned up what appeared to be a figure in the distance. Not sure what he was seeing. He switched to thermal imaging and tried to find the figure again, but it was gone. When he went back to night vision, he was able to see the mysterious figure again, which had inexplicably closed a large distance in just moments. A switch back to thermal once again turned up no heat signatures at all. Even though Lima was sure that the whatever it was was still there, at some point in all of this switching between thermal and night vision, he lost sight of the figure altogether, at which point he claims he felt a heavy tap on his shoulder. When he turned around, there was supposedly no one there. Somewhere out in the night, the dog was still barking. Observation Point Rock is not the only supposedly haunted military outpost in Afghanistan. Another notorious one is called Forward Operations Base Salerno. The location of the base already lends itself well to spooky tales, as on its outskirts is an old Afghan graveyard, which is overlooked by two high watchtowers. Indeed, it is these towers that are said to be intensely haunted by what appears to be the spirit of a little girl, said to be sometimes heard or seen wandering around aimlessly, either in the towers themselves or in the area around them. One frightening report concerned two paratroopers with the 2nd Battalion of the 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment named Painter and Jackson, who one night were on watch duty when they were startled by a blood-curdling shrill laugh emanating from their radio, so high-pitched as to almost cause pain. The laugh was described as sounding like that of a little girl, and Painter would claim that no grown man in the army could have made it. When the unearthly laugh stopped, the two men raided to others on watch, but it turned out that no one else had heard a thing. The very next evening, the two men were on watch duty again in the same place, still rather unnerved by what had happened the night before. As they sat there in the dark, they claimed that they heard movement and footsteps in the tower, particularly on the trap door that led to another level, even though they were the only ones there. The room also allegedly suddenly became very cold for no apparent reason. This was unsettling enough, but then there came a call over the radio from the other watchtower claiming that they were detecting a small three-foot-tall figure wandering around the dark outside. Creepily, although no details of the strange phantom could be seen, what did appear to be clear was that whatever it was reportedly seemed to be waving at them. Jackson says he went out into the balcony to investigate, but saw nothing but the desolate nighttime landscape and that graveyard out in the murk. A scan of the surroundings with thermal imaging equipment also turned up no heat signatures of any kind. After that, the scared man reluctantly continued the rest of their shift with no further such phenomena. Interestingly, although the incident was indeed frightening, Neither of the men felt that the ghost was malevolent, but rather that it seemed to just want to play. In this case, the figure had been small but rather indistinct, yet other stories add more eerie detail. On another occasion that supposedly happened years earlier, two Marines were in one of the watchtowers when they looked out and clearly saw, through their night vision goggles, a young girl walking along in the desert night with a goat. But when they took the goggles off, both the goat and the girl were gone. As soon as they put the goggles back on, the girl was back, this time shockingly standing on the watchtower balcony, much to the horror of the guards. The event was so upsetting that these toughened marines were supposedly reduced to tears and refused to go back to the tower. This is not even an isolated incident, and there have been other sightings of a ghostly little girl out walking about either by herself or with a goat, both always undetectable by thermal imaging or night vision. Adding to ghostly lore of Ford operating base Salerno is the account of an airman who had done two deployments in Afghanistan and had spent much of that time stationed at the base where he stayed at a compound designated for aviation personnel. One night, he says he was out with another person from his platoon to go visit a friend of theirs who was doing guard duty at one of the towers. 
The friends spent some time chatting, and by the time they left the guard, it was quite late and the moonless night was pitch black, making it hard to get back to their compound since they did not have night vision goggles with them. They got lost and decided to head back to the guard tower to ask for directions back. As they set out into the night, again towards the compound, they claimed they heard a rustling in footsteps like someone coming up behind them, but when they looked, no one was there. This would happen several times as they picked up their pace and finally reached their destination. Could this have been the same spectral little girl? The mysteries of this place have yet to be explained, and there have been so many strange, unexplained phenomena at forward operating base Salerno that has become almost legendary in the region among military personnel. What lies behind cases like these? Is there anything to them? Or is this all the result of a scared mind seeing the world through the cracked sense of stress, horror, fatigue, and hallucination? There are many who say that this is precisely what it is. However, although I can see this being the case with lone, isolated individuals, it becomes harder to explain in these terms when the apparition is seen and experienced by several men at once. Is this possible that it is just a mass hallucination where each one sees exactly the same thing at exactly the same time, down to every detail? Is this something that truly happens with mere hallucinations? There's also the fact that they may be lying, which is a possibility, but then again, we're dealing with men with more on their mind, like staying alive and combating the enemy, than coming up with fanciful tales for the amusement of it all. Then there is the possibility that something truly strange is really going on, but what that could be remains evasive. In the end, it certainly seems that war zones can attract just as many strange specters, phantoms, and assorted entities and spooky tales of hauntings as any old derelict house or secluded darkened forest. In fact, some of the most haunted places in the world are places that have been cast under the shadow of violent battle and strife, whether that is happening now or a dark piece of history from centuries ago. War zones and battlefields consistently draw to themselves such eerie stories as if they are not only collecting ghosts in the sense of memories of a bloody past, but also literal ones as well. Is it because place is so saturated with killing, anguish, and horrific struggle somehow tether the spirits of the dead to them? Does all of this negative energy manifest itself in some bizarre and mysterious fashion beyond our understanding? Is it because the gruesome horrors of war have managed to pervade the landscape and etch themselves into the very fabric of reality, like light onto film, with events and individuals playing back like a video. We may never know the answers to questions such as these, but one thing that becomes apparent when looking at these accounts is that sometimes those in the field face terrors, both human and otherwise, and must come face to face with fear, both living and dead.